So this is the end of our chapter two practice test. Let's start just busting these out. This is problem 12. And this is right from section 6.6. .6. I'm gonna introduce a log. I'm gonna make the three the base and I'm gonna switch the X and the 18 and get the log base three of 18 equals to X. That's my answer. Because the problem has an equal sign, I can check. If your calculator has log base and you wanna check, you would just use your log base. If your calculator doesn't have log base, then you need to do like log of 18 divided by log of three. Regardless, 2.63 is a two decimal approximation. I know when I recorded the videos, I was using more than two decimals. I need to change that X to something that I'm comfortable with. Four decimals is usually good enough. Let's see how well this checks. So three exponent 2.6309. And of course I'm an idiot. Three exponent parentheses, 2.6309 parentheses. This gives me 17.999 is equal to 18, and that's good enough. I have a video uploading right now on YouTube. Hopefully that's not, noise isn't really distracting. You don't need the decimal answer. It's only there for checking. That log base three of 18 is a better answer. Same style for number 13. I'm gonna introduce a logarithm because it's not possible to write the right-hand side as three to some power. So anytime you have an X and an exponent, you absolutely can use logs to solve. Sometimes there's an alternate, but on the test apparently there's not gonna be. So I'm gonna write the word log. The three's gonna be the base. The two's gonna come over with the three and the X minus five is gonna to move to the opposite side. I'm gonna add five to both sides to solve for X. The five can be written before or after the logarithm. For my calculator, it's easier to write it before. So that's my answer. Let me do this on this calculator. Five plus log of two divided by log of three. And I get 5.6309 for checking purposes. On this better calculator, five plus log base three of two Still, 5.6309, and now I wanna check. How do I check? Well, I go to the original problem and change the X to what I want it to be. So it's three to the 5.6309 minus five equal to two. It's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be close. So three exponent 5.6309 minus five and my old calculator requires parentheses because it doesn't show the exponent. If your calculator shows the exponent, you don't need the parentheses. And this is perfectly fine. You don't have to give me a decimal answer. You don't really have to check. Checking is just a safety net so that you know you're not writing down a wrong answer. The next few problems, I'm gonna check using my, um, my tables that you're allowed to use on the test if you don't write on these. So, for each one of these problems, they start off with a log and I need to get rid of the log. How do I get rid of the log? It's just the opposite of what we're gonna do, what we've been doing. I'm gonna cross out the log and I'm gonna switch, in this case, the x and the four and create an exponential equation. So the three's gonna be the base, the four's gonna become the exponent and the x is gonna free up. Three to the fourth I have memorized it's 81. And now I'm going to check using my table because I want you to get used to using that. The original problem asked me to do solve that equation. Now let me see if the x is 81. If this is good, go to my table log base 3 of 81. That's equal to 4. So the left hand side equals to 4. You can find this handout under the chapter six problems if you didn't get it in class. That's it, we're done. 
same style for 15, but anytime I have a logarithm to get rid of a logarithm, well, more often than not to get rid of a logarithm, you need to change it into an exponential function. In order to change ln of x into an exponential function, I need to get rid of the shorthand, put it into the longhand. ln is shorthand for log base e. Let me rewrite the left-hand side as log base e of x. And now I can write the exponential version. I'm going to cross out, and I'm going to switch. And this is going to give me... This is going to give me e to the second power equals x. That's my answer. I'm not sure I have this in my chart. Oh, yes, I do. So e to the second power is what my answer is. Don't really need the x equals, but I'm going to write it. And I'm going to try to check right in there. So for checking purposes, so I don't write down a wrong answer, the ln of x has to equal 2 when x is e, squ e squared. Let me see if the ln of e squared is 2. And notice when I typed it here, just in case somebody else might see it, I did the parentheses, which is appropriate to put the argument in a parentheses. But if the argument you know, doesn't have any adding or subtracting in it, then the parentheses is not such a big deal. But the ln of e squared is equal to 2. So this gives me 2 equal to 2. Probably better to have parentheses here, but not really that big of a deal if I don't have them. They're almost just more cumbersome to write. I'll do the same for 16. 16 gives me the log base 2 of x plus 1 equals to 5. I'm going to scratch out the logarithm. The 2 is going to become the base. And I'm going to switch the x plus 1 and the 5. When I free the x plus 1 from the logarithm, I won't need the parentheses anymore. So the 5 becomes the exponent, the x plus 1 becomes free. 2 to the 5th, I don't need a calculator for to know it's 32. You can use a calculator if you don't know that. So my answer is 31. Let me check it by going right there and plugging in 31 for x. So for checking, is the log base 2 of 31 plus 1 equal to 5. That won't be in my table, but certainly the log base 2 of 32 will be in my table. So I added that 31 and 1. I go to checking mode, look for the log base 2 of 32. It's there, it's equal to 5, so the left-hand side reduces to 5, which equals the right-hand side, so I know my answer of 31 is correct. So there's no reason to put down a wrong answer for any of these problems. You can check any problem that has an equal sign. 17 is a big exception. This is a problem that I don't have to put into exponential form because each side of the equal sign has a logarithm the same base. For this problem, and the only this problem, I can drop the logs and set the arguments equal to each other. So I'm going to do 4x minus 8 equals 3x minus 1. I'm going to minus 3x from both sides. That's going to give me 1x minus 8 equals to negative 1. And I'm going to add 8 to both sides. This is going to give me x equal to 8. This I don't know that I can check on my calculator, but I can check by hand. So for checking, I should, for that x and that x, plug in 8. Plug in 7. More error. Negative 1 plus 8 is supposed to be 7. I don't know why I wrote 8, but those have opposite signs. You combine by subtracting and making it positive because this bigger number is positive. So for checking, I'm just going to by hand to this. The right-hand side and the left-hand side eventually will equal the same logarithm. If I simplify each of the arguments, the 28 minus 8 and the 21 minus 1 on the left-hand side both reduce to 20. So these two are equal to each other. These are ugly decimals. They wouldn't be in my table. My table wouldn't have the ln of 20 on it. No way, because the ln of 20 is not a very nice number. 
but both of these sides reduce to that decimal, which is fine. Two more problems are the hardest two problems. 18 is easier than 19. For 18, it's two logarithms separated by a subtraction with an equal sign. The logarithms have the same base. For these, this problem, I need to use the minus to divide rule to write the left side with one logarithm. If you have two logarithms, same base, separated by a subtraction sign, you could make those two logarithms into a single logarithm if you form a fraction with the arguments, the left argument in the numerator, the right argument in the denominator. Now I have one log. Now I'm going to scratch out the log and switch and leave the 2 as the base. So this is the exponential form now. This is going to be 2 to the 1 equals x plus 2 over x minus 1. These problems we solved by cross multiplying. And in order to solve by cross multiplying, I need to work on that left hand side. 2 to the first power is just 2. And 2 can be written as a fraction by just writing it over 1. Now I can cross multiply down and cross multiply up. When I cross multiply down, I get 2 times x minus 1. When I cross multiply up, I get 1 times x plus 2. 2 times x minus 1, you multiply 2 times x and 2 times minus 1 and get 2x minus 2. 1 times x plus 2, you get 1 times x and 1 times 2, or 1x plus 2. I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides. That's going to give me 1x minus 2 equals to 2. I wrote 6 for an answer, and I'm not getting 6. Let me see. And then plus 2, plus 2, x equals... Oh, I see my issue here. What happened? I wrote the problem down wrong. Let me um, see if I've got a piece of paper around so I can just um, redo this. This happens all the time when I'm grading. Students do what I just did. When I wrote this, that x minus 2, because I was thinking about this 1, I wrote it as x minus 1. My algebra is perfect, but the problem's wrong. So let me fix that by doing the correct problem. So what I should have done on my very first step is write the problem down properly, but I didn't. I didn't make a math error, I did a problem writing error. Sometimes problem writing errors make the algebra ridiculous. This problem writing error, yeah, was, wasn't going to make the algebra ridiculous. It was still going to be doable, but let me fix this now. So, re-imagining this problem. Same exact algebra. If you have two logarithms, same base, separate it by a minus sign. You need to make the two logarithms into one using the minus to divide rule. Now I'm going to scratch out the logarithm. I'm going to switch the one and the fraction. This two to the first power is just two. And I need to make it into a fraction so I can cross multiply. And any integer can be made into a fraction by writing it over 1. Now I'm going to cross multiply, cross multiply, and get 2 times x minus 2 equals 1 times x plus 2. Left hand side is going to be 2x minus 4. Right hand side is 1x plus 2. I don't need the 1 in front of the x, but most students like that. Subtract 1x and get x, 1x minus 4 equals the 2. Add 2, add 4 to both sides and get an answer of x equal to 6. I'm going to check this using my table. I'm going to go into the original problem, change both the x's in the original problem to 6. do the addition or subtraction to make the logarithm something I can do on my table. Oh, idiot. So this gives me the log base 2 of 8 minus the log base 2 of 4. 
that's supposed to equal to 1. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Log base 2 of 4 is equal to 2. So this is just 3 minus 2, and it's supposed to equal 1, which is does perfectly. One last problem for this review. It's the hardest problem, and negative answers won't work. If I get a negative answer, it won't check. I'm just going to throw it out. So the big thing is here, when it says check for negative answers, I should just do, don't include negative in your answer. If you plug a negative in, um, in for the x here, it's going to make a negative logarithm. And logarithms of negative numbers are have i's in them, and they won't check. So you get an i on the left side and not an i on the right side. So for our problem 19, the logarithms that have um, the version of this two logarithm problem that has a plus between the logs, you can't use a negative answer because it won't check. When I wrote my answer down here, I don't know how readable this is, it's probably best just to write the positive answer. The algebra is going to produce two numbers, 6 as well as negative 6. And if I included the answer that doesn't check, I need to say that it doesn't check. And is extraneous is a fancy way to say it doesn't check. To get started with this, I'm going to take the two logarithms and make them into 1. Unfortunately, I can't. divide. Because the dividing algebra is so much easier, a lot of students ignore this plus sign, treat problem 19 like it has the minus sign that problem 18 does, and when they write the two logarithms as 1, they put a diffraction, but that's not right. If two logarithms are separated by a plus and they're the same base, then you need to multiply the arguments. Let me multiply that x plus 2 times x minus 2. I'll do firsts are x times x, which is x squared. Outers are x times minus 2, which is minus 2x. Inners are 2 times x, which is plus 2x. And last, 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4. Outers and inners cancel. I can write this as a log base 2. Notice I'm putting a parenthesis here because it's really necessary if, the, if there's adding or subtracting as part of the logarithm. Now I have a single logarithm. Good place to be. I'm going to cross out the log. I'm going to create a problem with an exponent. The 2 is going to be the base. I'm going to switch the 5 from the x squared minus 4. And I'm going to solve this. Because there's an exponent, I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve by factoring. 2 to the 5th is 32. Now I'm going to minus 32 from both sides. There are alternate ways to solve this. I just think this is probably the best way. On the right-hand side here, the two negatives add together to be negative 36. And now I'm going to factor. This is a, a difference of squares or a square with a minus. You're going to get two essentially identical parentheses. I'm going to divide the exponent by 2 and get an x to the first power to lead off my parentheses. And I'm going to square root the 36 to get a 6 to end my parentheses. So differences of squares are squares with minuses. Factor into two essentially identical parentheses, except they have opposite signs. The x plus 6, when you set it equal to 0 to get the answer from it, you get negative 6. If you plug negative 6 in for that x, that would cause the argument to be negative. That would cause an i to come up in the checking. I'm not even going to check it. Negative solutions won't work for us in this particular problem. The factor of x minus 6 is going to give a solution of 6. That's going to check, and I will check that. So I believe the only answer is x equal to 6. And I'm going to go to the original problem, the log base 2 of x plus 2 plus the log base 2 of x minus 2. Change the x's to 6 and see if that's going to equal to 5. So I'm going to change that x and that x to 6. And that's going to give me 
the log base 2 of 8 plus the log base 2 of 4. I think these are the same logs. And make sure that that equals to 5. Break out my cheat sheet. Allowed to use this on the test. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. Log base 2 of 4 is 2. So this is going to give me log base 2 of 8, which is 3, plus log base 2 of 4, which is 2, equals to 5. And it checks perfectly. So for these problems in the second half of the video, there's not a reason to write down a wrong answer, unless you just don't know how to do it. But you making an algebra error, like I tried to make on problem 18 by writing the problem down wrong, you should be able to catch that if you check your answers. So that's the end of chapter 6. Normally the chapter 8 test is take home. Um, so hopefully it is, and this is the last in-class test you have to prepare for.